Oh, hi there. Uh, my name is Rolf, and today we're going to talk about puppets. Now, I suppose most of you all know what puppets are. In fact, maybe you've even played with them. But I have a puppet here that I just put on. And one of the nice things about puppets, you know, is that you, it, it's your own hand in there, see, so you can make it do anything you want to. Uh, right, puppet? Uh, just nod your head yes, puppet. Uh, how, how about this, puppet? Come on and do, do a little dance. Do a little dance for the kids, puppet. How about that? Do a little dance. Uh, how about, uh, how about wave? Wave to the kids. That's an easy one. Wave to the kids. Everybody wave to the puppet, and the puppet waves back. Hello, kids. Listen, listen. Are you listening to me? Well, this is an order. I want you to do something. I don't care what you do, but do something. Do anything. What are you doing? What do you suppose he's going to do with that stick? Oh, ow, up the, I'll catch you for that, you little cloth head. Oh, up, up. Hello there, my name is Jim Henson, and I'm a puppeteer. And I'm called a puppeteer because I work with puppets. And my own act, my puppet act, is called the Muppets. And the dog that you saw at the beginning of the show is one of my Muppets. Now, there are all kinds of puppets. There are puppets which are large and puppets which are small. They're strange and yeah, weird yeah, yeah. puppets. But, but, but hand puppets are the best kind. Well, hand puppets are one of the kind of puppets that we have. It's called a hand puppet because it's worked with a hand. And you usually put your hand into it like this, put your index finger into the head, the thumb into one hand, your other finger into the other hand, and you work it like this. See? Hello there. Now, beside hand puppets, one of the other main kinds of puppets is called a string puppet. Now, another name for string puppet is marionette. And here's a marionette. It's worked by strings from above and with a wooden control which is held by another puppeteer, and this is Jerry Jewell. One of the nice things about a string puppet is that you can show the whole puppet from head to toe so he can dance around, he can move around in a big open space, as opposed to a hand puppet, which is usually cut off at the waist. Now, beside the hand puppet and string puppet, the third main category of puppets is called a rod puppet. And here's a rod puppet from a far off country called Java. Now, a rod puppet is worked usually with one rod that goes up through the body into the head, and then there's another rod that goes to each hand. There's some very complicated rod puppets, but this particular one is very simple. See? Now, beside these three categories of puppets, there are a lot of other kinds. And Frank Oz over here is another puppeteer. Hi. He has a finger puppet. Now, a finger puppet is worked with two fingers of your hand becoming the legs of the puppet. You see? So the puppet walks like this. And then the puppet has a little body on top of the head here, on top of the uh, legs, rather. And the hands of this one are worked by strings. This is a ballet dancer. So, Frank, why don't you make it do a little ballet dance? <laughs> Thank you, Frank. So that's a finger puppet, which is one of the many ways we have to control or move various kinds of puppets. Oh, uh, gosh, Jim, that's amazing. Well, how do you mean, Ralph? Well, I never realized there were so many different ways of working puppets. Yeah, but there are really only three basic ways. Uh, rods, strings, and hands. And you can have all kinds of combinations of these. For instance, you can have a hand puppet that also has rods. Boy, Jim, there must be a lot of different kinds of puppets. As a matter of fact, Ralph, you know, you're a puppet. I, I, I beg your pardon. Yeah, I said you are a puppet. Oh, uh, no, no, Jimbo, I'm a, I'm a dog, remember? Woof, woof. 
Well, I hate to tell you, Ralph, but you're you're a dog puppet. No, no, I, I'm a real dog. Honest, I can prove it. Look, look, my dinner dish has dog written on it. See, it says right here, it says D, uh, it says uh, cat. No, that, that's the wrong one. Let me get the There, see, uh, that's, that's dog. I'm a, I'm a dog. No, no, not really, really Ralph. You, you want to see my the scar from my rabies shot? No. I'm a real dog, all right? Look, look, I can sit up. I can beg. Oh, please, please, I beg of you. That's begging, see? And, and look, I, I can even play dead. That, that That's very good, Ralph, but Ralph, Ralph. Mm -hmm. uh, that, see, that was playing dead. Yeah, but still you're a puppet. I, I can prove it to you, Ralph. Just just look down. Uh, 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 down? Yeah, look down underneath you. Underneath? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a man down there. That's a puppeteer. You're a puppet. No. No. Oh, no. I can't stand it. Good grief. I'm a puppet. Oh, uh, how will I ever explain this to Lassie? Oh. You know, there have been puppets for almost as long as there have been people. And one of the kinds of puppets that we've had with us for a long time is a shadow puppet like this one from India. This is a puppet of the monkey god, Hanuman. And it's made out of leather. It's made out of the skin of a deer, actually. And if you were to watch a puppet show with this kind of puppet, the show starts in the late afternoon and goes all night long and doesn't end until morning. And there were many other kinds of puppets developed in India. Uh, there's one here that we have with us called a Rajasthani puppet. This one is, uh, they worked puppets like this for over 2,000 years. This puppet has worked with only a couple of strings and was the beginning of our present-day marionettes. You'll notice that the puppeteer wears a set of bells on his hands that makes that noise as the puppet moves. We've also had puppets in Europe for a great many years. Uh, this character right next to me is from Venice, and this particular puppet is over 300 years old. He's from the collection of Bill Baird, who's another puppeteer, and it probably was originally a hand puppet Although now it's worked with a wooden, it's the leg of a chair, which is inside the puppet there, like this. Now the beginning of most of the puppets in this country came from a puppet character called Punch, of Punch and Judy shows. And Punch has been around in England for over 300 years. And uh, Punch is a funny little character with a high squeaky voice, and he sounds like this. Punch always had a club or a stick with him, which he would beat up the other characters, and the other characters would always beat up him. Ooh, yeah. This particular one is called a slapstick, and it's made in two pieces, so that when the two pieces hit together, it makes a loud noise when you're beating up another character. Now, there were always several other characters in the Punch and Judy show, and one of these was the crocodile. <laughs> And the crocodile was the beginning of certain other characters like Ollie, of Kukla Fran and Ollie. And the crocodile is, uh, was a character that always tried to eat up the other characters. He would chew on them. Punch would always save himself by taking his stick, sticking it into the crocodile's mouth like that. Throughout all the different countries in Europe, each country would develop their own sort of national puppet hero, just like England had Punch. Uh, in Russia, they had a character called Petrushka. In France, they had uh, Guignol. In Italy, they had Punchinello. And in Belgium, they had a character like this called Chanche. And Chanche has worked with an iron rod that goes down into his head. It's a very simple way of working a puppet, and they've been working puppets like this for about 2,000 years. Another character that's worked the same way is a Sicilian puppet. Now, here's, here's a Sicilian puppet. This character is made out of wood, and it's got real armor on. It's very strong and durable, so that when he would have fights with other knights, it would make a big, loud noise. If a character was killed, he would fall across the stage and make a tremendous noise. But not all puppets had to be as violent as this. Frank Oz, who was just working as a Sicilian puppet, has a character of his own, which he calls simply The Man. And in the following skit, you'll notice that although the man never speaks, you can always tell what he's thinking. 
So here now is a skit called The Sunday Painter. Now, so far on the show, we've shown you many different kinds of puppets and different ways of working them. But as I told you at the beginning of the show, my own act is called The Muppets. And, uh, Ralph... I don't want you to think that all of the Muppets look like me. Now, certainly not. For example, uh, let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Here's Kermit. Hi there. Now, Kermit is also a Muppet. I most certainly am. So, as you can see, not all Muppets look alike. Some are handsome, dashing, appealing, lovable, and good-looking. Oh, well, gee. And then there's Kermit. Ah! He's just funny-looking. Oh, let's watch that, doggy. Well, you do have kind of a funny, froggy look about you. And you, sir, have a head like a fuzzy, long-eared mushmelon. You got eyes like sawed-off ping-pong balls. Is that a nose, or are you eating a doorknob? Listen, frog, at least I have real hands. So? So all you got is them little hands on sticks, see? Uh, keep your hairy paws off my sticks. You can't even pick things up. Uh, maybe not, but I know something I can do. What's that? <laughs> Ooh, ah, let go. Come on, I was just kidding. Uh, you're handsome, Kermit. For one thing, you have a very strong jaw. How do you like my sparkling blue eyes? They're, they're, they're beautiful. 
That's better. I've never seen prettier ping pong balls. Oh, I mean eyes. Oh, come on, Kermit. Now, uh, come on. Let's 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 be friends. Uh, you and me can listen as, as Jim introduces more of the Muppets. Uh, you'll be interested in this, Kermit. Uh, hey, Jim, tell us more about the Muppets. My handsome, good-looking friend here is very interested. <laughs> okay, Ralph. Actually, there are a lot of different kinds of Muppets. They come in all shapes and sizes. And just to give you an idea, here are a few brief glimpses of some more Muppets. Some of us Muppets are very cute. Some of us are absolutely adorable. Some of us are ugly and we like it that way. Some of us even have more than one head. And you know what they say. Three, Three heads, heads are, are better, better than, than one. one. Scholar with Razzle. I have just cast a magic spell upon you. In two seconds, everyone watching this program will turn into a frog. One, two. Rats. Didn't anyone turn into a frog? I did. I used to be a handsome prince. I remember you when you were a prince. You look better as a frog, fella. So there are some of the Muppets. Actually, one of the things we're best known for is our monsters. So over here is a group of our Muppet monsters now. Hi, fellas. You know, they look pretty tough, but actually they're very nice guys. We have small monsters. Hi there. And then we've got medium-sized monsters. Hello. And then we've got... Uh... You know, you're going to have to come back and clean it all up, Splurge. You know that? Anyhow, now that you've met the Muppets, maybe you'd like to see them do a little story for you. Ralph, why don't you read a storybook that they can act out? Okay, I'll just get out my big old storybook here. And I'll read you a story of, um, let's see, how about Cinderella? Everybody want to hear the story of Cinderella? Okay, here we go. Now, once upon a time, there was a lovely girl named Cinderella. And she lived with her evil stepmother and two stepsisters. And they were all three as ugly as old tomcats. Cinderella? Cinderella, come in here, you wretched child. Now, that's the stepmother. She's six kinds of nasty. Did you call stepmother, dear? That's Cinderella. She's a good kid. Cinderella, I have some very important news for you. Now, listen closely, and you're going to hear all about the big royal ball that the prince is giving. Cinderella, Granny is not feeling well. I want you to bring her a basket of goodies. A, ba a, ba a basket of goodies? But that's not in the story. Oh, my poor dear Granny. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop, stop the story. What's the matter with you, doggy? Well, e e excuse me, ma'am, you see, but uh, you got it all wrong. Because Little Red Riding Hood goes to Granny's house. Cinderella goes to the big ball that the prince has given. Oh, but I just couldn't go to the ball and have a good time knowing that my dear old granny was not feeling well. Exactly, child. Now, here's your basket. You just run along to granny's. Ooh. Here we go. Oh, brother, I guess we're going to tell that story instead. Uh, let me find it here. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Now then, Cinderella, strange as it may seem, went gaily skipping through the forest on the way to Granny's house. Now listen closely, because here comes the scary part. It says in the book here that while she was walking along, two evil eyes were watching her from a thicket. Suddenly a huge hairy beast leaped out and said, Hi there, my name is Hansel. Now wait a second. You're, you're supposed to be a wolf. Hmm? Oh no, uh, I'm a little boy named Hansel. Well, my gracious mercy, me. Hello, Hansel. I'm Cinderella. No, no, hold on. Hold on there, boy. Now, uh, Hansel, you're in the wrong story. I am? Sure. Now, uh, come over. I'll, I'll show it to you right here in the storybook. See, it says right here, Hansel and Gretel went walking through the woods together. Oh, yes. That's what we're doing, all right. You are? Sure. Well, then where's Gretel? Oh, she's right over there. Uh, should I go get her? Uh, sure, I guess so. I'll be right back. Oh, brother. Uh, uh, pardon me, doggy. Hmm? I feel that I must go on to Granny's house. Please tell Hansel farewell and that I should like to meet Gretel some other time. Right, right, fine, fine. I'll tell him. It sure is getting complicated, you know. Hi there again, doggy. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, would you still like to meet Gretel? I'd love to. All right. Uh, Gretel, Gretel, come on in here, girl. Come on. <laughs> Good grief, Gretel is a cow. Oh, yes. 
I'm taking her to market to sell her for a bag of magic beans. Magic beans? But that's Jack and the Beanstalk. Hansel. Hansel and the Beanstalk. Sure, sure. Have it your own way. Hansel and the Beanstalk. I don't think you'll be able to sell that cow, though, because she's pretty funny looking. Oh, well, that may be, but she's a very special cow. She jumps. Your cow jumps? Sure. Here, I'll show you. Gretel? Gretel? Jump. Jump, girl. Jump. <laughs> There she goes, headed straight for the moon. The, the moon? The moon. And the cow jumped over the moon. That's right. I should have guessed. Gretel is a really great cow. Well, listen, Hansel, this is all very interesting, but see, i got to get back to telling the story about Cinderella bringing her granny a basket of goodies. Oh, fine. I, I have to be on my way to the marketplace. Okay. Goodbye, doggy. Yeah, fine. So much for him. Now, let's see. Uh, let me get back to the story. Okay, here we go. Now, Little Red Cinderella, or whatever her name is, went skipping through the forest to Granny's. But when she got there, she found... Nobody home. Oh, well, that's, that's impossible. The wolf should be there dressed as Granny. No, no one is here. But there is something on the table. What's that? Three bowls of porridge. Three bowls of porridge? But that's the three bears. Oh, boy. Now, where's that story? Okay, here we go. Now, Goldie, a little red uh, cinder up. Anyway, she was so hungry after her long walk that little red cinder locks sat right down and tasted the porridge in a great big bowl. Oh, that is too hot. And the next bowl was probably too cold. You're right, but that itty bitty baby sized bowl is just right. I will eat it all up. And so Cinderella ate all the porridge in the little bitty baby wait, bowl. Wait, wait. And, uh, mm -hmm. Heart. What do I hear? Well, it's probably the three bears coming home. No, it does not sound like bears coming home. Well, what does it sound like? It sounds more like a cow falling out of the sky. Good grief. It's Gretel and she's returned from home. Well, 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 so this is Gretel. What a pretty cow. I shall kiss her on the nose. It's a magical transformation. Why, look, for gracious sake. Gretel the cow has turned into a fairy godmother. Hello there. Hot dog, we're back to Cinderella. Yes, Cinderella, and tonight you shall go to the ball and meet the prince of your dreams. And so, Cinderella married the prince, Hansel climbed the beanstalk, Gretel came down from the moon, the three bears returned from their walk, the porridge cooled off, and they lived happily ever after. <sighs> So we thought uh, you might like to see what it looks like from backstage. This is what it looks like when we're doing a television show. Uh, we stand up here, the four of us, we're working this one, and uh, we're watching a television set here while we're doing the show, so we can see what we're doing. And this particular show, we were doing the, uh, the lines, we were reading the lines as we were doing it. Sometimes we work uh, with the show memorized, and sometimes we work to a record. We'll record the uh, audio track and play it back. Uh, we hang up the puppets along here, and uh, we have our microphones, this one, and I'm wearing a microphone here on my hat. And if you'd like to see what it looks like during a show, we'll play back a little bit of the show so that you can see what it looked like from backstage while we were doing that last skit. Okay, I'll just get out my big old storybook here, and I'll read you the story of, um, how about, uh, Cinderella? Everybody want to hear the story of Cinderella? Okay, now, once upon a time, there was a lovely girl named Cinderella. And she lived with her evil stepmother and two stepsisters. And they were all three as ugly as old tomcats. Cinderella? Cinderella, come here, you wretched girl. And that's the stepmother. She's six kinds of nasty. Did you call stepmother, dear? That's Cinderella. She's a good kid. Cinderella, I have some very important news for you. Now listen closely and you'll hear all about the royal ball that the prince is giving. Cinderella, Granny is not feeling well. I want you to bring her a basket of goodies. 
a, ba a, bas a basket of goodies, but that's not in the story. Oh, my poor dear granny. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop the story. What's the matter with you, doggy? Well, well, excuse me, ma'am, but you see, uh, you got it all wrong. It's Little Red Riding Hood that goes to Granny's house. Cinderella, you see, goes to the ball that the prince is giving. Three bowls of porridge, but that's the three bears. Oh, boy, now where is that story? Uh, okay, here, here it is, here it is. Now, Goldie or uh, Little Red, uh, anyhow, was so hungry that after her long walk that Little Red Cinderlocks sat right down and tasted the porridge in the great big bowl. Uh, that is too hot. And the next bowl is probably too cold. Yes, you're right, but that itty-bitty baby-sized bowl is just right. I will eat it all up. And so Cinderella ate up all the porridge in the itty-bitty baby-sized bowl. Wait, wait. And, hmm? Hark, what do I hear? Well, it's probably the three bears coming home. No, it does not sound like three bears coming home. What does it sound like? It sounds more like a cow falling out of the sky. Oh, no. It's Gretel and she's back from the moon. <laughs> well, 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 so this is Gretel. What a pretty cow. I shall kiss her on the nose. That's a magical transformation. Why, look. For gracious sake, Gretel the cow has turned into a fairy godmother. Hello there. Hot dog, and we're back to Cinderella. Yes, and tonight, Cinderella, you shall go to the ball and meet the prince of your dreams. And so, Cinderella married the prince, Hansel climbed the beanstalk, Gretel returned from the moon, the three bears returned from their walk, the porridge cooled off, and they all lived happily ever after. Hmm. <sighs> Gee, Splurge, I didn't think you'd be able to clean the whole place up like this. But it really looks very nice. Oh, there, girl. Hey, and listen, from now on, try not to walk into the scenery, would you? Oh, I'll be careful. Okay. Well, bye-bye. If you were watching that last bit, you saw Don Salim here, who was doing some of our backstage effects and working the puppets in the show. Don is our puppet maker, and he also does all of our special effects. Now, in that last bit, Don did one special effect, which was when the uh, cow turned into the fairy godmother. And Don, why don't you explain what you did then? Well, we use a simple rubber tubing <clears throat> and uh, a plain funnel. And we put a little tape on the top to... Uh, why, yeah, why is the tape on there? Well, if you, if you blow the, the powder right out of this tube, it just comes out in a steady stream. So we put the, uh, the tape on here to sort of disperse it and make it into a big round mm. explosion. Why don't you do one so I'll show you. You use just regular talcum powder. Yeah. We try to use the kind of talcum powder that doesn't have any scent, because otherwise we all smell like babies. <laughs> okay, here goes. At the same time we did that effect on the show, we used a sound effect of uh, an explosion, which they uh, used a record in their control room. And other kinds of special effects are things like if you do thunder and lightning, or if you do um, water or fire, or some things like this. If you, when you try to create these in a show, it's called a special effect. And it always adds to the show a great deal. It makes this uh, puppet show a lot more exciting, I think. Uh, Don also is our puppet builder. And uh, we might show a little bit about the kind of characters we usually use in the Muppets. Uh, we work them with our hand in the head, doing the mouth like this, and then we work the hands with rods. You saw. And Don, you build most of these characters. Why don't you talk about how you go about building a puppet? Well, first of all, I usually um, start with a sketch of gems, and uh, it might be nice if you could do a, a rough sketch I'll do a rough sketch. One of our puppets. Okay. And I'll take it from there. Usually, I give Don a sketch. I try to make it the, the, the approximately the same size we're going to do the puppet. And if I wanted a funny little character, this might be a side view of him. Uh -oh, I like that. And. We might later on put hair on him to make him a little boy character, like that. 
And then we'll say a body goes down like this with a shirt and arms like that. Then usually I also give Don a front view. So front view might look like this. Um, like that, that's his mouth there. I just wanted to say that I, I rely on Jim's sketches a great deal to capture the essence of the Muppets, because uh, I believe they, they exist in the initial sketch. And then we take, um, right from the sketch, I go and make patterns like this. This is the covering pattern. And then I have another pattern for the foam. Yeah, talk, tell them about the materials you use right. in making the heads. Well, most of the Muppet characters are made from urethane foam, which is, this is just a, a piece of it. And it's sort of like foam rubber, if you know what foam rubber is. And urethane foam is a plastic foam, but it acts just like foam rubber. Yeah, it's very flexible. And we, we realize instantly, excuse me, Don, mm -hmm. that these puppets are probably more complicated than puppets that you might make, because, you know, we're professionals. But later on in the show, we'll show you how to make some very simple characters. And then the, the first thing that I really make is the mouth, the mouthpiece. This is the, the, um, the sort of foundation of the whole puppet. And then from there on, I go to the foam. And I put contact cement on it, which I have already put on these. And this is just a plain commercial contact cement. And uh, right now, I'll show you how, to, um, how we really put one of these together, because this is all dried. Yeah, the contact cement is one of the, it's like rubber cement. You put it on first, and then you let it dry for a few minutes. And after it dries, then you stick it together. And it's a good way of, of gluing uh, things like foam rubber together. Uh, and the nice thing about contact is that we have a, a dryer here that if you make a mistake, you put this dryer on that has different heat intensities, and you can undo your, your mistake. While Don puts this together, Dennis, why don't you play some puppet-making music? fleecing that is a marvelous um, material because you can sew in rather interesting seams that disappear completely. Now, this is a kind of fabric they use usually to make things like blankets and so forth. And we use it because when you make a seam, that means when you sew two pieces together, and here's a puppet right here, it's been seamed right up the front. You see, you can barely see it on television, but that's a seam right there. There's another seam right under the jaw goes straight down through there. So I call that the Henson stitch, because Jim developed it. <laughs> hey, Jim, can I interrupt you for a second? Sure, Ralph. What is it you want? Well, I was just thinking that the boys and girls have been sitting for a long time, and maybe they'd like a good long stretch, you know, before we watch the rest of the show. How about that? Everybody want to get up and stretch? OK, everybody stand up. Stand up. Now, ready? Let's go stretch. Thought I heard something. Hmm. I hear something. Okay. One more time. Ready? And stretch. Oh, hello up there. Uh, are you stretching too? Okay. Well, Jim, I think everybody now can sit down. Everybody sit down. Sit down and get comfortable. Are you comfortable up there? All right, Jim. I guess my buddy and I are ready to hear the rest of the show. Thank you, Ralph. You know, we uh, have a lot of fun playing with the character when we're developing a puppet. And we have here a Southern Colonel type character that we've, uh, he's worked similar to Ralph and uh, some of our other characters. He's a, he's a two-person puppet. And in this one, uh, I'm working the left hand 
and the head. And I'm working the right hand. Is that Sam? That's right. I've never really figured that out before. Son of a gun. Anyhow, what we're going to do is we have some features here, some eyes and nose and so forth. Well, you took off my beard. And uh, we're going to just play with these different features and, and rearrange them and see if we can come up with several different characters in the course of the next few minutes. And uh, so first of all, as I say, he's a southern colonel. That's right. And I'm wearing a fifth helmet because I just come back from Africa, you know. What, what did you I do was, in Africa? I was big game hunting in Africa, you fella. big game hunting? Yes, indeed. Well, what game? Monopoly. Uh, That's a big game in Africa. Didn't you know that? Didn't, didn't know that. Now, why don't you make him younger by just taking off this mustache? That's right. Already I'm younger. You see, I could be a rock and roll singer being young like this. Heard the, heard the Beatles' latest record? Wow. What happened to my nose? Put my nose back on. There. And now we can make him a character like uh, a poet, possibly. Say a poem. 30 days, half September, April, June, and no wonder. All the rest have 31, except my grandmother who drives a Volkswagen. Do you understand that point? Mm -hmm. oh, neither do I. I've never really understood. It doesn't You've rhyme got, either. It doesn't rhyme. Right your fingers it's a terrible poem. What we're doing, we're just putting these various features on with double face tape. And we use a great deal of double face tape. Uh, and then after we'll set the feature, and after we'll decide where we want it, we'll glue it on. But, uh, you see, we can... Hey. Okay. Here's the plan. We're gonna grab a piggy bank, you see? Mm -hmm. I know a great piggy bank. It's loaded with money. Good. Loaded, loaded with money. Good. It's got at least a dollar and a half. You know? That's big money. Did you know that? Great. Mm, let's go. All right. And then we could take these same eyes and uh, we could turn them over and end up with quite a different kind of a character. Mm. It's... You see, it's a sad world. Did you know that? It's a sad, sad world. <coughs> Particularly if you smoke a pipe. Excuse me, sir, you're losing your nose. I don't smoke a pipe, you know. Why don't you make him the science fiction type of character? Okay. Then we could take all the features off and, uh... I'm turning out the lights. Meep, 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 meep. Hmm. What a strange looking creature this is. What is this upon the middle of your face, creature? Hmm. Earth nose. A nose. What is that on the side of your head? Earth hair. What is this growing on top of your head there? Earth hair. Yeah, it's very funny looking. But you can see just by rearranging these various features, we can. Uh, make it many different kinds of characters. And these are just cardboard eyes that we're putting on. And so uh, if, you work, if you work with puppets, you know, play with how you rearrange the face, you know, play with different ways of, of making the character. And uh, have fun. <laughs> That's the main thing. So, yeah. And now he's back to the Southern Colonel again. That's right. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see some of the other kinds of Muppets. I've seen enough of this kind of puppet. You got any other kind of Muppets? A lot of them. Let's see some of them. You can see right through me. I'm nobody. So this, this is a character that we developed a couple of years ago. It's something that you wouldn't ordinarily think of as a puppet. It's just made out of a few pieces of foam rubber worked by strings to a glove on my hand. And it can become things like a bird, like that. Uh, and puppets can be as simple or abstract, or they can be very complicated.
Three, there you And then let's see, we go uh, present guns. Yep. And right face. Yep. Ready, aim, fire. <laughs> ah. And then the guns come down. Oops, get your gun down. So, at the beginning of the program, we talked about rod puppets. We talked about very simple rod puppets. Well, this one is a very complicated rod puppet. And it's worked by all these various and sundry bars and uh, rubber bands and so forth to make the soldiers turn and so on. And, but you don't have to have complicated puppets because puppets can be as simple or complicated as you want them to be. So you can see from that last bit that you don't really need any elaborate kind of puppets to do a show. You can use just your bare hands. But we'd like to show you how you might go about making some very simple puppets. We've taken some styrofoam balls like this, the kind of thing that you could find like in a dime store or something like that. And we'll use those for heads. And first of all, we poke a hole in it for the index finger. And uh, <clears throat> these kind of puppets are going to work with uh, three hands, like, I mean, three fingers like this. Here's a little character that we took and we made. His name is Charlie. And uh, we just put yarn for the hair, thumbtacks for the eyes, and we pinned the features on. Pins will just hold down into the styrofoam. Here's the kind of body that we like to use for this sort of puppet. Very simple. You put it on your hand just like a glove. And then you can put on the head. Hello there. How are you? And uh, a nice um, simple thing for eyes, too, is tape, just black tape. Mm -hmm. And you can stick it on for eyelashes. And fringe makes great hair. It's very floppy. Another kind of good hair is uh, this fake fur. Uh, you can buy it in a fabric store, and it looks like fur, but it's actually made out of fabric, and you can buy remnants of it. It's very reasonable. One thing that makes a good and simple costume is uh, a simple piece of cloth, and you just hold it up like that, and you cut it along like that, and you just have a, a round circle, put it on like this, and you've done it. That's just his costume. Oops, there she is. <laughs> you don't have to uh, use the styrofoam balls. See these little styrofoam coffee cup-like things? Uh, you could take a coffee cup, for instance, put a, a paper tube inside of it here, and then stuff it with paper towels here, or anything, Kleenex. This is just to enable to you know, hold it on your index finger. See? And there you have a head. And you could take a marker pen or something like that, draw features on the puppet. So here we'll make... Uh... Another good use of styrofoam is um, for making crowns and hats. Very simple way. So, there's a little puppet face. Put some hair on him. Hello there. You don't even have to have any of the styrofoam things. You can make a puppet just out of paper. Here, let's start off with a paper tube. And you could just put a face on it, like that, see? Uh, it can put on hands, like so. On hand. These are just made out of paper. There. In other words, you can use almost anything to make puppets. Um, you don't have to use any particular pattern. You can find your own patterns. Don's working on a dragon there. Yeah, another great thing is an old sleeve for a dragon's body. Put the styrofoam balls for the eyes. It's all out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. Here's another kind of character that could be made just out of paper, like so. And we could put a, a little cloth body on her or him, whatever that is. And. Uh, Tell you what, why don't we do a little puppet show using some of these very simple characters that we have made uh, in the kind of show that you might be able to do. Once in a place far away, in a time long ago, in a kingdom called Frell, in a throne room in a castle on a hill, 
There lived a king named Fred. I'm pleased to meet you. But Fred was a swell king. You betcha. And he had a daughter named Gwendolinda. Ah, the beautiful Princess Gwendolinda. Hi, Fred. Now, one day, King Fred and Princess Gwendolinda were in the throne room discussing matters of state. How are matters of state, Daddy? Oh, pretty good. That's nice. Now, on this particular day, who should arrive but a young boy with a feather in his hat named Charlie? No, no, uh, that's wrong. I'm Charlie. My feather's named Edward. I see. So, uh, what brings you to the throne room, Edward, my lad? Uh, you mean Charlie. Uh, I'm Charlie. My feather's Edward. Oh. Uh, unless you wanted to talk to my feather. E either way, I don't care. Oh. Well, I am Charlie, a young boy of your kingdom. I have come to seek my fortune. I wish to work in the palace. Well, I don't think we have any jobs open just now. He's very cute, Daddy. I like him. Oh, well, in that case, how would you like a job as the third assistant helper to the deputy janitor? I'd like that very much, King Fred. You're hired. Thank you, sire. <laughs> you work 16 hours a day and you get paid six cents a year. That's very generous of you, sire. Come, daughter, let us stroll in the royal garden. And so the weeks went by, and Charlie worked very hard. One day, the king and princess were discussing things of great importance. How are things, Daddy? Very important, daughter. That's nice. When suddenly, a very strange event took place. <laughs> Good nights at the round table. Mercy me! I am Scritch, the wicked witch of the kingdom of Frell. Is that a fact? I've come to get you trespassers off my land. I beg your pardon. The hill on which this palace sits belongs to my family. My grandfather once had a cave on this very spot. So pack up your castle and get out. You can't be serious. Uh, here's your afternoon cup of cocoa, your majesty. Ooh. Uh, uh, who are you? I am the witch, Scritch. I'm evil, mean, greedy, and heartless. My friends are rats and bats and squiggly things. My foes are laughter, puppy dogs, and kings. I kick kitty cats for a hobby. Uh, would you care for a cup of cocoa? Charlie, throw this old lady out of the palace. Yes, sire. Let go of me! Stop this! King Fred, you'll pay for this! I'll get even with you! Come, daughter, let us play a game of croquet on the royal lawn. And so the Wicked Witch was thrown out of the palace. But early the next morning... Charlie, where's my breakfast? I want my breakfast. Coming, sire. And what's that? It's a, it's a big black box. I distinctly asked for scrambled eggs. We just found it on the front porch. It is for the princess. A present for my daughter. Well, I will go fetch her. Yes, sire. It's very nice when the princess gets presents. At Christmas time, I'm going to give her Edward the feather in my hat. It's not much, but it's all I can afford on six cents a year. That's funny. I thought I put the box in the corner. Oh, well. <clears throat> there. I wonder what can be in it. It's very heavy. Perhaps it's something from... See, this is very strange. What can possibly be inside? <laughs> Good heavens, there's a dragon in there. This is terrible. I better get help. Gwendolinda! Now, where has that girl gone? Huh. I can hardly wait to see what this present is. Hmm. Good nights at the round table. The present is jumping around. I've never seen a present jump before. I wonder what's inside. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, help! Servants! Charlie! Gwendolinda! Your noble, fearless chicken king is in danger. Oh, 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 oh. Did you mean me? I thought I heard father calling. I wonder what he wanted. <clears throat> Look at this big box. It must be a present for me. I shall open it up. Don't open the box. There's a dragon in there. Yes, there's a dragon in there. Run, Gwendolinda, run! How dare you 
attack the Princess Gwendolyn. I'll fight you with my bare hands. <laughs> that your father has been eaten by the dragon. Ah, uh, that is not altogether correct, Charlie, my boy. Daddy, are you all right? Well, as right as anybody can be after he's been sat on by a dragon. I see you defeated the old witch. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm at your mercy. <laughs> Why are you still laughing? I'm not tickling you anymore. I, I've never laughed before, and I like it. <laughs> Uh, how would you like to have a job around the palace, witch old girl? I'm uh, here. Yeah. I mean, we could use someone with a sense of humor. Oh, I'd love it. <laughs> and as for you, Charlie, my lad, because of your brave and faithful service, I give you the hand of my beautiful daughter, the Princess Gwendolinda, in marriage. Oh, thank you, sire. Oh, well, thank you, Daddy. Henceforth, you shall be known as Prince Charlie. And your salary goes up to a dime a year, too. <laughs> oh, I just love happy endings. <laughs> In conclusion, I might mention that there is an organization called the Puppeteers of America. And if any of you are vitally interested in puppetry, you'd probably benefit from joining. They have a uh, journal that comes out every couple of months, and they have a festival annually. And membership is open to uh, individuals and groups of all ages. Hey, Jim, here's the address in case anybody wants to write it down. Right, okay, the address is the Puppeteers of America, Box 1061, OJAI, that's O-J-A-I, California. And the zip code is 93023. There are also books in your library on how to make puppets and books on historical puppets, uh, including a very beautiful one here by Bill Baird, and it's called The Art of the Puppet. Beautifully illustrated. So I hope you've learned a little bit more about puppetry today. Thank you for joining us, and goodbye. And goodbye from all the Muppets, too. <laughs> <laughs>